battles are won by hitting enemy airplanes with bullets. This obvious fact is often given too little consideration. Control of the air in any locality is impossible unless the fighter pilot has the ability to shoot and to hit. To accomplish this, he must become expert with his fixed guns. Gunnery in itself is a science, but when related to the art of flying, becomes part of it. You must therefore have a complete knowledge of the fundamentals of gunnery. Without a thorough approach to the subject, it will be almost impossible to develop accuracy in combat fighting. The speeds involved are so great and the range changes so rapidly that the uninformed gunner is deceived at every turn. There are several considerations to make before firing. Each presents a problem. All must be solved with lightning rapidity before the target is gone. These important factors governing the point of aim are bullet velocity and range the speed of the target and the target angle. By coordinating these elements of gunnery, you will be able to shoot at a definite spot out in space, which will become full of airplane when your bullets arrive at this spot. As an aid to this end, the illuminated fixed gun sight can be used for two purposes to calculate the amount of lead to give the enemy plane and to estimate the distance at which to begin firing. To demonstrate the principle of the illuminated sight, we will concern ourselves with the Mark 8. The optical system, which is much the same in all illuminated sights, consists of a light bulb, a reticule of the sight rings, a series of projecting lenses, and a reflecting plate. The light from the bulb passes through the reticule and the projecting lenses transfer the image of the sight ring to the reflecting plate where it is seen by the pilot. When this image of the speed rings is superimposed on a target, both are seen simultaneously. If the pilot's head should move, the sight rings will always remain the same in relation to the target. This is a distinct advantage, since it gives the pilot greater freedom in flying his plane. This illuminated sight uses the mill as the calibration unit. A mill unit on the reticule is established by viewing one foot at a distance of 1,000 feet. The center dot is known as the bead, and also more commonly as the pepper. The inner ring has a 50 mil radius. The radius of the outer ring subtends 100 mils. The four radial lines extend from 25 mils to 150 mils from the center. This provides an additional yardstick for measuring lead and range. In most of your shots, you will lead the target by using various points on imaginary radial lines between the tipper and 150 mils. Incidentally, your mill sight is a delicate precision instrument. Don't use it as a hand grip when getting in or out of the cockpit. In order to know when to start firing, it is necessary to know the bullet velocity and range. Remember, the target isn't hit the instant you press the trigger. The bullet travels only 1,000 feet in the first four tenths of a second. As a matter of fact, its speed is no more than about six times that of the average airplane. The effective range of your bullets is quite limited. Gravity will cause them to drop about 18 inches after traveling 1,000 feet. In fixed gunnery, compensation is made by elevating the gun sighting so that the average rise and fall of the bullets is not more than about four inches off the line of sight. If the guns were all set parallel to each other, the dispersion of your bullets would become too great. To counteract this natural dispersion, each of your guns is set at a different angle. 
This offset results in a convergence of fire within effective range, giving increased concentration, and your bullets go where you're aiming. However, increased firepower is no substitute for good marksmanship. If you miss with one gun, it is likely that you will miss with all. Because of the speed of planes versus bullets and the rapid deceleration of the bullets, it is futile to fire at long ranges. Add to this the dispersion of the bullets and the limits of accuracy of the gunner, and you can readily understand that effective range is quite limited. So for practical purposes, we shall set 1,000 feet as the present maximum effective range. However, the best range will be closer to the target. This is the point nearest the target where a smooth, easy flight may be maintained. Naturally, the closer the better. This factor of range, or distance in the air, is really a deceitful problem. Your judgment of distance must be developed by constant observation of planes at various ranges. A satisfactory calculation of range can be quickly made with your sight if you know the length or wingspan of the target. At a range of 1,000 feet, the 25 mil radius will intercept 25 feet. 50 mils will intercept 50 feet. In fact, any number of mil units will subtend an equal number of feet at a distance of 1,000 feet. This is the basis of the mill calibration system. The wingspan of this enemy fighter is known to be about 37 feet. It's too small in comparison to this 37 mil segment, but as we get closer, its wingtips match the segment exactly at the 1,000 foot range. Here is a Jap bomber below. It's a Mitsubishi Type 96. Specifications span about 82 feet. Length. 52 feet. Take an 82 mil segment for the wings and a 52 mil segment for the fuselage. There is your 1,000 foot range. A range of 500 feet is reached when the dimensions of the target are twice as large. These comparisons are accurate only when the target presents a surface that is parallel to the lateral axis of your plane. In actual flying, this condition will rarely exist, and the foreshortening effect of angular vision must be considered. By using this system of measurement as a check on your estimates, your judgment of the effective range will improve. 